Midsommar is written and directed by Ari Aster and is the follow-up to his 2018 very acclaimed and yet very divisive film Hereditary. Danny, played by Florence Pugh, is undergoing some very severe emotional trauma. Her younger sister has committed suicide and in doing so has also taken the lives of her parents uh, because the way she does it is she lets the fumes of the cars run all night and so her parents uh, are collateral damage if, if not Maybe it was purposeful, that's never really stated. She's in an extremely dark and depressed state, and all the while this is going on, her relationship with her boyfriend is essentially nearing its end. Cut to a couple of months later, when winter turns to summer, uh, and they're still together. And this is probably mostly down to the fact that her boyfriend didn't want to leave her while she was in such a, you know, catastrophic state while she was undergoing the worst period of her life. The film really taps into this idea that people never really separate when it's time. Relationships never end when they're supposed to. They always drag on because it's never the right time and you don't want to hurt the other person. Although maybe staying with someone when it's way past the expiration date is possibly even worse than hurting them right then and there. Uh, but that's something really the film taps into. Uh, in a way that's really interesting. So the boys are planning this trip to Sweden in the summer. They're going to leave to uh, one of their friends' uh, village to this little commune that's lost uh, in the wilderness in the woods up in Sweden that's really particular. They have this really incredible summer uh, kind of pagan festival and since they're all anthropology students and their friend Christian is from there, they want to spend the summer over there observing and just do what dudes do. But Danny gets wind of this and her boyfriend then invites her on the trip, much to the dismay of the other dudes uh, in the group, especially the one played by Will Poulter, who essentially serves as the comedic relief for the film. And then from then on, they head to Sweden, they get to the village, and things start to get pretty weird. Writers will often say that writing the second novel is far more difficult than the first one. I tend to think that there's a lot of truth in that with filmmaking as well. A second time around, a filmmaker needs to tread new ground, all the while pursuing his autorial voice. He has assuredly garnered a huge amount of experience, but is then faced with generally a bigger budget, a bigger crew, and also much bigger expectations. 2019 is a really interesting year in that two really fascinating new voices in the horror space released their sophomoric effort. One being Jordan Peele with Us that came out earlier this year and now Ari Aster. And I think you can actually draw a lot of parallels between both uh, directors and both trajectories. Both efforts really just hit it out of the park. They are both remarkably well scripted, uh, really well put together, tight, and uh, very thematically coherent, whereas the follow-up is maybe a little more bloated, a little longer than it needs to be, but also in terms of filmmaking, just extremely ambitious and, and a real step up in terms of what the film is trying to do from a visual storytelling standpoint. Midsommar is undoubtedly a very impressive directorial achievement. The otherworldly, incredibly oppressive sunlight in which the film is bathed makes for a, an extremely stark contrast with Astor's previous work, Hereditary. Astor embraces grotesque imagery in a way that's really seldom represented in contemporary American cinema, and that's far more akin to something you would see in 70s European auteur cinema, um, especially in a film like The Wicker Man, which is very evident as a huge influence on the film, but also maybe in the works of something like Ken Russell. And it's a grotesque that is at the risk of alienating the film from a part of the audience that generally doesn't know how to respond to that kind of imagery and generally ends up uh, laughing at it or deriding it. Something that Astor really does is he generally front loads his disturbing imagery and his emotionally resonant uh, moments uh, at the beginning of the film, which is not really in line with what a lot of other filmmakers do. In this film in particular, like the opening five minutes is really the emotional crux of the film in terms of where Florence Pugh's character is coming from. 
and the goriest, most disturbing, most violent sequence happens about halfway through the film, and it's a sequence that if you've seen it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And that's really interesting to me because that means that he doesn't have to outdo himself. Astor knows that he can play around with the emotional response that an audience has to his imagery, and so after an initial terrifying shock, he can just up the suspense and up the anxiety meter just a little bit, and because we as spectators are aware of where the film can go, our mind tends to go to the darkest places, and that plays into our fear of what's going to happen. All the while, Astor really doesn't have to do all that much, and that's really the sign of a really good horror director, somebody who really understands uh, what film as a visual medium can do. Astor's films are marketed like horror films, but in reality they're more family dramas that happen to be drenched in horrific, terrifying imagery. Amidst the pagan, Wicker Man-esque, almost Bergman-esque at times imagery, Florence Pugh delivers an extremely powerful and commanding central performance, and I'm really curious to see what she does next because I thought she was absolutely fantastic in this. Navigating between her grieving process and the destruction of her uh, relationship with her boyfriend. Now, for me, uh, I don't think that anything in Midsommar can compare with the incredible dynamic uh, between Gabrielle Byrne and Toni Collette in Hereditary, or that single off screen take where Collette discovers her daughter's corpse and just pushes a scream that will forever be entrenched in my memory, all the while the film is staying within Alex Wolf, her son's perspective, who of course is responsible for what happened. However, Mitsomar is still a deeply disturbing, powerful, uncompromising nightmare that manages to make a vacation in the lush, beautiful Swedish countryside seem like absolute hell and daylight, nerve-wracking, and oppressive. And not only that, but at times the film is also genuinely funny and manages to straddle that line of horrific but also comedic, which is something that I don't think Hereditary did at all. But of course, that's only up until it does something incredibly fucked up again. What is it? What's wrong, sister? So as always, thanks very much for watching the video. Be sure to hit the like button if you like the review. Subscribe if you're new. Next videos will be videos uh, about films that I've seen at Fantasia, uh, which is uh, going on right now. But of course, between actually going to a bunch of screenings and then writing down notes and actually making these videos, kind of a long process, but certainly there will be at a certain moment a lot of videos uh, around Fantasia that roll out. But until next time, see ya.